we are all functioning at a small fraction of a capacity to live fully in its total meaning of loving, caring, creating and adventuring. Consequently, actualizing our potential can become the most exciting adventure of our lifetime, says Herbert Otto, a behavioral scientist. Now, we are all functioning at a small fraction of our capacity to live fully in its total meaning of loving, caring, creating and adventuring. Consequently, actualizing our potential can become the most exciting adventure of our lifetime. Well, we want a lot of excitement in life and therefore we do a lot of things. We want adventure in life. We go up the mountain top, we go down the ocean, we travel the length and breadth of the world because we are all wanting an excitement and adventure in life. But Herbert Otto says actualizing our potential can become the most exciting adventure of our lifetime. Well, we all have enormous potential. You've got enormous possibilities and we need to tap into that. In order to tap into our potential, we need energy to bring it out. Now, what is that energy we human beings possess which can help us to bring out our potential? The energy that we have is our thoughts are energy. Now, our thoughts are the ones that create because everything, first of all, it's created in the mind as a concept, as a thought and then comes out into action as a reality. So therefore, thoughts are energy. Thought energy is as tangible as any other energy. There can be various energy. For instance, solar energy, hydro energy, electrical energy, laser energy, so many of them. But energy has got a science. Energy, when it is concentrated, it's powerful. When not concentrated, it's powerless. For example, this light that is falling on me is energy. I need this light to see you and you need this light to see me. We all use this energy. But this light energy is diluted, therefore it dissipates. But if the same light energy is concentrated, steered and focused, it becomes a laser. And laser has got the power to cut through steel. And laser today is being used in life-saving surgeries. So therefore, Energy, when it is concentrated, it's powerful. Energy not concentrated is powerless. For example, we have got the sunlight, sun's energy. Now, the sunlight that we face outside is diluted. We need the sun. We go out. We use it. So many things we do. But if you take a magnifying glass, allow the sun rays to pass through the magnifying glass and put an object under the rays that comes to the magnifying glass, what happens to that object? it burns because now it is concentrated. Similarly, you might have a hot beverage like tea or coffee. Now, when your tongue is experiencing, let's say coffee, it experiences the taste of sugar, milk, water and caffeine. In addition to it, your tongue experiences something else and that is heat. Now, if that coffee was served not with that heat, you probably will not drink it. You liked it. Now that we establish the fact that you like heat, enjoy heat. Now, if I take a cigarette lighter and put it under your tongue, you will scream. The reason is right now the heat energy is concentrated. So the science says energy when it is concentrated is powerful. Energy not concentrated is powerless and diluted. The same logic applies to our thought energy as well. When our thoughts are concentrated, it has got the power to create and the same thought energy has got the power to destroy as well. So every creation that we see, every constructive activity that we see is nothing but examples of creative thought energy. Now there are lots of destruction happening and even that is a thought energy. So therefore, good people will use the thought energy for creative purposes and put it into the best possible use. So therefore, we all possess thought energy. Now the question is, why is that we are not able to concentrate the thought energy? There are two reasons. One is that because of our lifestyle, our habits, we are not able to concentrate our thought energy. Two is we do not know what is the meaning of concentration. Well, I want to share with you both these aspects. Now, why is that we are not able to concentrate our thought energy? Well, we all are born in this world and we've got an incorruptible factor called the conscience. 
and every time when you perform an action supported by your conscience you are absolutely fine there's no problem at all that work of yours is going to be exceptionally well good now the fact of the matter is that we want to get things done in a shortcut in a fast manner and therefore instead of being having a conscience to support it we develop cunningness and this intellect when it is worked based on the cunningness it's called as cunning intellect and therefore you introduce skirmishes inside you every time when you perform any action which is supported by your cunningness you introduce skirmishes or disturbances because we have got an incorruptible factor called the conscience which is there and any time when a cunning intelligent acts and puts a thought inside you and your conscience protests it it is protesting and this protesting with your conscience and cunning intelligence is causing disturbance and dissipates your energy for instance you do something wrong something bad something illegal your conscience says don't do it but you listen to your cunning intelligence and do it and there is a skirmish and therefore you are not able to concentrate so every time when you perform an action which is supported by your conscience there is no problem at all because you are an ease so very very important our thought energy can be powerful only when it is supported by our conscience and we are conscious about whatever we are doing i like to read a poem to you it is titled as the guy in the glass it says when you get what you want in your struggle for self and the world makes you a king for a day then go to the mirror and look at yourself and see what that guy has to say for it isn't your father or mother or wife whose judgment on you must pass the fellow whose word counts most in your life is the guy staring back from the glass he is the fellow to please never mind all the rest for he is clean with you to the end and you have passed your most dangerous and difficult test if the guy in the glass is your friend you may be like jack honor and chisel a plum and think you are a wonderful guy but the guy in the glass says you are a bum if you can't look him straight in the eye you may fool the whole world on the pathway of yours and get pats on the back as you pass but the final reward will be heartache and tears if you have cheated the guy in the glass friends the guy in the glass is a conscience so the world might celebrate you as a great person but if your conscience does not approve of it you are a failure so it's very very important every time you go to the mirror and look at your face you also must know there is a guy in the glass in the mirror beyond your physical appearance if you can see the guy in the glass your conscience and listen to the voice of your conscience you will be absolutely at ease and your thought energy is going to be concentrated so therefore listen to your conscience and perform every action on your conscience then you will find you have peace which is very very important than the wealth that you might accumulate using your cunning intelligence well we need to understand what is concentration now having understood what does not allow us to concentrate because of our cunningness and for us to concentrate we need to work from a consciousness and be conscious about our action and now the next is that we need to understand what is concentration concentration is defined as your ability to steer your whole mind towards one thought or one activity disregarding of the many million thought that comes in because at any point in time so many thoughts are coming in your ability to steer your whole mind towards one thought or one activity disregarding the rest, rest of the many is called concentration in short concentration is one minus many and the moment you can develop this level of concentration of your thought energy being absolutely unidirectionally focused towards one activity or one endeavor you are going to be very very successful because that is concentration as swami vivekananda says take up one idea think of that idea just work on that idea make that idea your life and you are going to be successful that means take up one activity of yours and give it your best if you see all these people are a great success be it in any discipline they develop the discipline to be conscious to be concentrating and not in discipline getting distract, distracted so therefore simple aspect is that take up one work and give it your best your best is going to come so here we found out concentration is your ability to steer your whole mind towards one thought disregarding the many thoughts one thought means one activity now as you keep developing this if you can come to a state of life wherein even this one thought drops 
just imagine a situation where you're in one thought, one thought, one thought, but over a period of time, even this one thought drops. Now, what is there? No thought. And this in our Indian scriptures, they say it as a state called Samadhi. Samadhi is a state of your being wherein you experience time without experiencing any thought, without falling asleep. And that is the most powerful state of our life where we are only conscious. We are just seeing everything, being absolutely aware of it, but no thoughts at all. So therefore, the Samadhi is a very powerful, enlightened, higher state of life, which is called as the ability to focus all your mind towards one thought, which is concentration. And Samadhi is your ability to be aware of time without no thought and no sleep. And that is what is Samadhi. And if we can practice this, we are certainly going to be powerful. So therefore, let's aspire to get in that no thought zone, to experience time without experiencing any thought, without falling asleep. But for that, let us develop the power of concentration and let us live by a conscience. And then we find we will optimize our potential and we'll do justice to this great human life of ours. Thank you.